So time, there are different ways we can measure units of time. Uh, let's start with kind of the common uh, time scale that we use. We call it solar time. So we'll start with the solar day, one solar day. And so this is uh, solar time is what we use on our clocks, on our uh, cell phones, laptops, everything's tied to the solar day because we kind of work with the sun. We sleep at night, we work during the day, unless you're on night shift, but society works kind of on a, a daily clock. Now, one solar day, as you all know, we divide that into 24 hours. Technically, there's solar hours. And those can be divided into 60 solar minutes, 60 solar seconds, just regular time. But, um, well, and let's define what that is before we introduce the other time scale. So, what is the solar day? And the technical definition is the amount of time it takes the sun to go completely around the sky and back to the same place. So let's define a starting point where, with the sun on the meridian. What's the meridian? That's another term. Meridian is the line that connects due north directly overhead, so going through zenith, there's the other term, down to due south. So it goes from north to zenith to south. So the, the great circle that goes overhead. Let's make that our starting point. So the sun rises somewhere in the east, it's moving across the sky, at some point it's going to hit the meridian, that starts our clock, and then we wait for it to go and sit in the west, go underneath the earth, actually earth spin on its axis, make it appear to go underneath, comes back up, it comes back to the meridian. That is one solar day. Now, and that's, and that's you know, we divide it up and that's how our clocks work. But astronomers introduce another day, it's called a sidereal day one sidereal day, and a sidereal is a term that means star or star-like. So we talked about the sun day, the solar day, the sun day, and we're going to talk about star day. How long, and by the same definition, is how long it takes stars on the celestial sphere, any star in the celestial sphere, to go completely around the sky. So starting on the meridian, and pick any star that's on the meridian, watch it as it sets, pick it back up as it comes back up, and makes it back to the meridian. That's one sidereal day. And we, you know, just the same, divide that into 24 sidereal hours. In each hour, 60 sidereal minutes and 60 sidereal seconds and so forth. But it's different from the solar day. It takes less time for the stars to go completely around than it does for the sun to go completely around. Just a little bit different. So if we write one sidereal day in terms of solar hours, it's 23 solar hours and 56 solar minutes. So a four minute difference. We need to explain that difference. So I could ask you, why is the sidereal day shorter than the solar day? But let me ask it the other way. Why is the solar day longer than the sidereal day? We know Earth is spinning on its axis. That's the main reason why everything's going around once a day. But what is Earth also doing with respect to the sun that's going to slightly change the length of the solar day? Earth is spinning on its axis, but it has one other motion. It's orbiting the sun, yeah. So here's some more terminology. I mean, you can kind of see it here. This is the beginning of it. But let's get our terms down straight. So technically, it's called rotation and revolution. Rotation, revolution. Rotation, we can also use the more common word spin. We're spinning on our axis. Um, but we also revolve. And revolve is not rotation. Revolve is orbit. So these words can be used interchangeably. It's really easy to accidentally use the wrong one. I'll even do it from time to time. So, you know, just catch me and laugh when I do it, I guess. So spin and orbit. Earth is spinning on its axis. The sidereal day is the more natural thing. It's just a matter of uh, Earth spinning completely around with respect to the distant stars. But the solar day, it's more complicated because as Earth is spinning around on its axis, it's moving with respect to the object that we're doing the timing against. So let's say we've got a person here standing on Earth, and the sun is overhead, or at least it's on the meridian. We don't have the third dimension here, so we don't know if it's directly at zenith or not. But it's on the meridian, so solar day is the time it takes for this person to spin around and have the arrow pointed back at the sun. But it takes a little bit longer because Earth is moving. 
So here we go, one sidereal day later, not one solar day, but one sidereal day later. Earth has moved in its orbit from this position to this position up here. It's one sidereal day because Earth is spun around and the air is back to the same orientation uh, with respect to the distant stars. Now this may be a little non-intuitive. You might think, well, I've moved. And so even if I'm thinking about a distant star, the arrow is going to have to point into a different direction to be pointed at that distant star. And technically that's true, but it's such a small amount for the faraway stars that it's not perceptible. And let me try to illustrate that. I'll draw it on the board here. I'll turn the lights on so everyone can see it. Yeah, I don't like the lights so much. It destroys the mood. Okay, let's see here. Here's the Earth. And uh, let's say we have a nearby star, first of all. And here we are, like, a day later. Earth has moved. If the star's nearby, like the sun, for example, if you're standing here and you draw an arrow from Earth to the sun, that's fine. And then once you move up to this position and draw an arrow from Earth to the sun, you can see those lines are not parallel. If it's nearby, Earth is going to have to rotate a little bit more to be pointed at the sun. But if I take the star and move it really far away, let's move it over here. Now I'll try to draw these lines straight. Won't be perfect. So there's connecting to the Earth on day one, and one day later, I'll draw this line over here connecting to the star on day two. You can see these, well, I tried to draw them straight. You can see these two lines are much closer to parallel. They're not perfectly parallel, but much closer to parallel than you get with the nearby star. And this is really not even close to scale. You've got to move the star like a kilometer, or, or maybe a bajillion kilometers off in that direction uh, for it to be scaled, to scale with relatively nearby stars. And so the farther away I move that star, you can see the slight change in motion of the Earth does not affect the direction to the star. You see what I'm saying? Okay. So that's one side aerial day later. Go back to mood lighting. Okay, one side aerial day later, we're pointed in this direction right here. Now, to point back at the sun is going to require a little bit extra rotation to go from here to here. And that extra rotation is going to be the same angle as this angle here. So it, it's going to correspond, we're going to prove it's going to correspond to about one extra degree of rotation, oops, which is going to take about four minutes, and that's going to account for that four-minute difference. So let's do the math for that now. First, let's start by coming up with this angle, 0.986. After one day, Earth moves 0.986 degrees in its orbit. So that one's pretty easy to do. We're going to use the symbol theta. Theta is often a symbol used for angles. You always start with what we know. And you can think of this as a unit conversion if you want. So we're moving one day in our orbit around the sun. And so we're going to go from days to degrees. So let's consider a full orbit to do our conversion. If we're going to do a full orbit around the sun, it takes how many days? 365 smidgen longer, that's why we have leap years, but good enough. And it, to go one full orbit, that's how many degrees? 360, 360 degrees in a circle. Got all that chalk dust there. 360 degrees. So the days cancel, and it's going to be 1 times 360 divided by 365. But these two numbers are about the same, so it's still going to be about 1, just a smidgen less than 1, because 365 is a little bit bigger than 360. So it comes out to 0986, if you stick it in a calculator, degrees, or about one degree. So in one day, we do about one degree's worth of motion around our orbit. So once we've done one sidereal day, then the Earth's going to have to rotate the same amount to be pointed back at the sun. And to see this, you just call upon your intuition, or maybe think back to high school geometry. Here we have two parallel lines this line and this line with the intersecting line between them. So this angle here, the angle Earth travels in its orbit, is going to be the same as this angle here. The angle, has to, the angle that the Earth has to spin to get the Sun back on the meridian. So we're going to do another calculation, figure out how long that takes, and we'll start with one degree. So the change in time, delta often means change. So delta T, change in time, start with one degree. 
Now, this is not rotate, not revolution, this is rotation, not orbit, this is spin. So we've got to figure out how long it takes to spin one degree on Earth's axis. Well, we know it does a full rotation, 360 degrees, in what amount of time? Earth spinning on its axis to do a full 360 degrees takes how long? 24 hours. One day, but let's say 24 hours. Okay, and let's get it in minutes. So we're going to go from one hour to 60 minutes. And again, to check that you did all your conversions correct, you have the units, you cross them off, and you're left with minutes. So it's going to be 1 times 24 times 60 divided by 360 divided by 1. And we can do that in a calculator, but we can also do it in our head. 60 goes into 360 six times. And 6 goes into 24 four times. So this is equal to 4 minutes. And that's the 4 minutes we were looking for. Where is it? Right here. So the sidereal day is shorter by 4 minutes. The solar day is longer by 4 minutes because you've got to spend that extra amount to compensate for your orbit around the sun. So there's the... Uh, full sequence. Now let's see here. Right, so the sun, compared to the stars, the sun is coming up four minutes later each day. That means on solar time, because we operate on solar time, our civilization is based on solar time, it means the stars are coming up, let's say if the sun's coming up four minutes later, the stars are coming up four minutes earlier. So if you go out at night you see the constellations, the next night, to be in the same position, you've got to come out four minutes earlier. The night after that, four minutes earlier. So the constellations are going to change. If a constellation rises at um, 9 p.m., it's going to rise four minutes earlier the next day. Day after day after day, it's going to shift the constellations until they're rising during the day, and you don't see them anymore, and you have another set of constellations that were in daytime before, they're now visible. So... It's just, uh, again, I said the course is about constellations, but we'll look at them just real briefly here. This is the summer sky in the northern hemisphere, uh, kind of the standard, uh, easy to pick out constellations. In particular, there's the summer triangle. You've got the three stars. You've got Altair, and you've got Vega, and Deneb. It makes a big triangle in the sky. If it's summer or close to summer, look for this. Look up in the sky, and you'll see a big triangle. And, uh, and Deneb is, once you find it, you know, Altair is at the apex of the triangle. Deneb's down on the, the base, the skinny base of the triangle. And that's also part of the Northern Cross. You'll see kind of a cross there in the sky. It's also called Cygnus the Swan, where this is the head of the swan. These are the wings, and this is the tail. Deneb's the tail. That's, those are constellations you see in the summer, but they rise four minutes earlier each day. So for the same solar time, six months later, you have a completely different set of constellations. And these are the winter constellations that you can see nowadays. And probably the most uh, recognizable of these is Orion. Orion is a winter constellation. If you look at it at night, you'll see it with its belt and its sword. And the middle star in the sword, if you look at it real careful, you'll see it's not really a star at all, but it's fuzzy. It's a star-forming region, the Orion Nebula. And right next to Orion, you'll see Sirius, uh, you may not see the constellation, but you'll see Sirius, the star. Uh, this is the brightest star in the sky, so it's really easy to see a distinct thing to look for. And then, but these ru rise and set four minutes earlier each day, so eventually they move out of the way, and the other set of constellations come back in for summer. That's why you see different constellations at different seasons. It's because of the difference in the sidereal and solar days. And while we're on the topic of the constellations shifting with time, I might as well switch gears to astrology for a minute. Uh, now, don't email me. I think I might have mentioned this. By the end of the semester, I get so many emails about Astrology 101. This is, this is Astronomy 101. This is the science version. Astrology is horoscopes and whatnot. But uh, since we're on the subject of the sun moving around the celestial sphere and what constellations you can see, I can at least explain the uh, constellations of the zodiac. The celestial sphere, of course, is full of constellations above the ecliptic, below the ecliptic. But uh, the sun traces this path across the celestial sphere from our point of view. In reality, the sun's sitting there, and Earth is going around it. 
the different times of year, the sun is blocking different parts of the sky from our moving vantage point. And the constellations that the sun appears to move in front of, and hence blocks because it's daytime and we can't see anything, those are uh, the constellations of the zodiac here. So the way this works, I was born in January, so here's the orbit, here's December and March, so January is somewhere over here. And if Earth is here, the Sun is blocking the constellation Capricornus, so I'm a Capricorn. So that's, that's where it comes from. It's the supposed house that the Sun is in when you were born. And you know, astrology is based off of this and other things. But uh, don't pay too much heat. Question. And actually, uh, historically, the astronomers were astrologers. They might have been doing astronomy on the side if you're working for a king or uh, royalty of some sort. You're being paid back in the day to make their horoscopes. That's how you make your living. And so the two were joined for a long period of time. They didn't really believe this stuff. At least a lot of them probably didn't believe it, but that's how you make your living. So let me ask, how many of you how many of you have gotten the pickup line? What's your sign? <laughs> how many of you have given it? How many of you actually use that as a pickup line? <laughs> Just guys, huh? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Pretty pathetic guys. 